Good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I am great. I am good today. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. 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 What's happening? You know, you know, not not a lot. Um, it's been a busy week. It's been a a busy week and kind of like a like a tiring week. Like a you know, mm-hmm. and I know there's a lot of. We have a lot of stuff going on at the library, you know, a lot of changes and things like that. And, you know, ramping things up and also adjusting. good morning, adjusting things. You know, it's just we're always in the process of trying to figure out how to work in, COVID. Make it yeah, work. work in COVID times. And so I feel like that was one of those weeks, too, where you're like a week of, of figuring things out is how this week felt. <laughs> Very definitely. Although I did good news this week. Oh yeah, what's your good news? Remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about um, uh, like the books we read when we were younger, um, yeah. very nostalgia. Guess what's coming back? What? Banana clips. They're totally making a comeback. Did you, <laughs> did, you did you wear banana clips when you were younger? Um, I feel like for some people they never went away. <laughs> true, true. But um, I was trying to turn banana clips like into a book series. I was like, banana clips, banana clips. What series with banana clips? <laughs> so it just took me a second to get there. No, um, I was just like, oh, you know, yeah, that was a nostalgia feeling from that episode. Yes, and to hear that banana clips are coming back, it was just like exciting news. Well, I mean, I know what to get you for Christmas. <laughs> I wonder what or is there going to be like an oh. update. Liz doesn't know what banana clips are. Are you wearing one right now? I am not. I feel so old. I will have to, if someone out there can pin a picture of banana clip for Liz, I would appreciate it. Um, If no one does, afterwards, I will. Is there going to be an update to them? Like a... It looks like it. Yeah, I saw a couple like newer style banana clips. But they're the, the, the clips that you wear, they're kind of shaped like a banana and they come apart. If you put them sideways, they look like a visor that, um, um, oh my gosh, Mary must be doing, um, Mary must be Fairfield County District Library today because she doesn't know what banana clips are. She doesn't either. have long hair. The visor that, that, that Jordy wore on, um, <laughs> on uh, Star Trek Next Generation. It kind of looks like those, but if you take it off and like put it under your hair, it makes your hair look like a mane, like a horse's mane. Yes, they're coming back. <sighs> Scott says, forget rubber ducks, start a banana clip collection. Um, this they look like like rubber ducks say, don't forget about me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, we'll have to look and see what the updated updated version looks like, or you know, um, if are they is there a new style? Are they bedazzled now? No, it look, just looks like they're just they're coming yeah. back. They're gonna come back. So I've seen it twice. Everything does everything does? There was a time period. Oh, it was Audrey. Audrey. <laughs> I totally figured it was Mary because I figured Mary doesn't care about hair. So. <laughs> Mary has awesome hair though. She just doesn't have long hair that she would does. be it's just short. Would be used so. in a banana clip. Audrey also doesn't have long hair that would be used in a banana clip. Also, banana clips aren't popular, so none of us have had an occasion to wear them. Please provide styling versions lattes next week on how to wear. I will have to order some and get some in, and then we can... Um, <laughs> We're not. We're not doing that. We're not doing. Uh, I'm gonna put my foot down. We're not doing a. a I know style. how to get a banana clip and just wear it myself. That's, That's good. Today. Good. We can do that. We can do that. Um, you just wear them. Yes. I have a hard enough time just getting my hair in the position it needs to be to leave the house and go to work. I'm not. I'm not doing. More. I'm, not figuring, I'm not figuring out how to use a banana clip, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> it was not something I ever wore, I, you know, but I did know what they were. I'm no fun, Liz says. I know that. Or you're no foo. foo. I'm no foo because she had a typo, so. There. <laughs> no, I know I'm no fun. Um, speaking of me being no fun and half the time confused. You walked me, my poor adult brain through something that happened on my Libby app yesterday. And I was very grateful. And I thought that maybe, or a few days ago, you walked me through it yesterday, but it's a few days ago. Um, I thought maybe some other people might 
have had the same thing. I got a weird message that this book that I had no memory of wanting was available for me to read. And I was like, hmm, what's this about? And I was still very confused. To be honest, I'm still not 100% sure what happened with this particular title, but you can explain what we all may have encountered on the 16th. Uh, yes, two days ago. Was that Wednesday? Yes, Wednesday. Um, all of the content from our RB Digital app moved to the Libby app. So um, people who didn't know about RB, RB Digital and weren't using it, um, we're putting holds on like the same titles or recommending that we purchase the same titles through Libby. Um, so once all of that content from RB Digital became available, they could immediately check it out because the RB Digital content was um, a simultaneous use. So like everyone could have it at the same time. So like hundreds of people got <laughs> the Diana Gabaldon um, Outlander series books immediately. Um, books that we hadn't bought in Overdrive because they were available in Libby, um, hadn't bought in Overdrive or Overdrive or Libby because they were available in RB Digital became available. So like hundreds of holds got filled on Wednesday. And typically we do about 200 and some checkouts on the RB Digital app a day, like 230, 240. Um, on Wednesday, we did 470 some, um, which is awesome for our library and the whole library consortium because we are a consortium of like, I think like 19 libraries for the ebooks. Um, maybe it's only 17. I, I think know. it's 17, but I don't know. It, it changes because there are a couple of non CLC libraries, okay. but there are a couple of CLC libraries that aren't part of it. So it, okay. it, I don't remember. Um, but that typically in a typical day consortium wide, we check out like 14,000 books um, on Wednesday, 21,000. So <laughs> yes, very, very jumping numbers. numbers. Um, and it's yeah. sad that people didn't know about and weren't finding the, the content that they wanted in RB Digital. I think it's just a matter of this is the app that I know, this is the app that I use. I'm not gonna search three different apps for the same title. I will not. I will not. I do. <laughs> I do. Because I want to get it through the library. What you want, man? <laughs> yes, I want what I want. But I think just a lot of people didn't know about RB Digital. Mm -hmm. We tried to advertise it several times, but it just wasn't getting used. So I'm so glad that people are finding that content now. And yes, my book. I, I like I said. I mu I must have had it on hold in some respect or I just Libby must have held on to this hold in some way, but I'm very familiar with my holds list and this was not, I swear it wasn't on it in recent times. I don't know. I don't know where it came from, but it's a recorded books title. So it definitely had to do with, had to do with this, but it is called <laughs> the Sable Queen, but Queen is spelled Q U E A N. And then it's a red wall book. Like, I don't know who in the comments has read the red wall books. I read them growing up. Um, very like, detailed fantasy books about animals like mice and there's it's, <laughs> there's nothing it's nothing i would read these days but i have a very fond place in my heart for them um martin the warrior and things and there's you know it was what was so cool about them was that everybody because of because they were animals they all had different like skill sets and and things so like the way like a chipmunk is going to fight is going to be different than the way like a badger will fight. Oh. And you know, how are you going to use like an acorn to, I remember them being very interesting, engaging and also very long. Um, and I haven't read one, you know, since I was a kid and I don't, I don't, I don't think I was ever planning on, on reading that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where the hold came from, but yeah. um, so anyway, so that, that was what popped up and I must've been testing something at some point, but yeah. whatever it is, the servers remembered it. And I was notified on Wednesday that the Sable yeah. Queen was ready for me to listen to. So, hooray yeah. for me. <laughs> and, but I was very confused and I called Leah and I kept not getting it. She kept saying, there were no holds on RB Digital. Everything was always available. And I was like, but I didn't, <sighs> I was just very confused. I wonder if you were check, testing out the, you know, recommendation process in, oh. in Libby. Cause you can okay. like recommend the buy titles. Maybe. And when you recommend it, they automatically put you on hold for it if they purchase it. So I wonder if you're testing out that process. 
That sounds very possible because it was not, it, I swear to you, it was not on my holds list. I I, I look at that and I watch yeah, when they would have been on your holds list. It would have been on your recommendations. Yeah. I bet that's what it was. And I was probably doing something. I'm wondering even if like maybe it had something to do with the narrator. You know, I'm like, oh, this, they narrate. I don't know. Anyway, we got to everyone. <laughs> a couple people were confused. I had one person call me and be like, I, why am I getting, why did three holds come available today? Well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but the great thing, which we've probably talked about before, but the great thing about Libby is that you can manage your holds. You can delay them. You can say yeah. deliver in seven days. You can say deliver in up to 180 days, I think. I think that's right. Yeah. And um, I really do love that about Libby because there's a good chance that when a book is ready for me, I am not ready for it. And it's right. great to delay it, especially yeah. audiobooks. Because I really only listen to one of those at a time. Yeah, books can be multiples, but audio, I'm kind of one at a time. And the and the great thing is, is, like, you don't only get that one chance to 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 edit it because, like, I had gotten book three before I got book two in a series because I put them both on hold. Um, and I got book three first, and I was like, well, I need to listen to book two, so let me delay this, and I said three weeks, because it looked like book two was not going to be available for, like, two weeks. Which is another really good feature. Yeah, but then um, I got book two, like, the next day, so I was able to go in and say, you know what, deliver book three in one week, so I was able to go back and adjust that, so it's not just a, you can adjust it one time, you can adjust it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like for a service where that does have holds and things aren't always available, it's like the best version of holds that they yeah. could have. We have a lot of Redwall love in the comments. I just want to say yeah. I have not thought about those books for a very long time, I guess, except when I made that recommendation um, that I don't remember making. I I haven't thought about them. I do have a lot of them upstairs. I own a lot of them, and it's kind of making me want to reread them again. I mean, I just, I remember, I you guys in the comments, Audrey says that Mariel of Redwall was probably the best. I don't know if I'm pronouncing anything right. That's just me and also fantasy names. Um, I did, I think I did read that one. Um, Judith says, Matthias, and I I remember him. I do kind of want to read these again. Liz says, yes, Redwall. <laughs> Redwall Book Club. I mean, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I think that sounds fun. Um, so I might have to read those, read those again. I just, I remember... I remember them using the caps of acorns, like as bowls, and it was so cute, or something like that. Um, That's so cute. They're good stories. They're good stories, as I remember them. And like I said, pretty you know serious stuff: battles, wars, you know, changing alliances, like Game of Thrones, but not oh. inappropriate and with animals. Very nice. I, I had never heard of this series. I don't know it. Oh, well, I'm trying to think of the best way. I'll just check it out. Just have to check it out. It's available now. It's available now, and it's like feet and feet of books, the, the, the physical books. Um, Audrey said she was obsessed with them as a kid. They turned her into a total fantasy fan when she was 11. And yeah, I think that's a, a thing about them is because they were about animals, they were a good, a good connection for kids. Yeah get into that world you know um because it was kind of like a bridge between like kind of see more serious high fantasy adult stuff and then you know more kid fantasy stuff and judith says that the audios are full cast recording which is that is always fun i like that i like when there's different characters have different voices i really like that yes. maybe this winter i'll have to see what's available maybe this winter that will be like what i listen to mm -hmm. um because i read this article that was talking about like how to prepare for the winter blues this year specifically, because, you know, it's probably going to be harder for people given COVID. You're going to be able to do even less than you normally do in the winter time. And one of the suggestions was like, basically the point of the article is prepare now. What are things that you can do now? And one of the things was like, plan a project for the winter, but something like happy and fun and good, not like I'm going to learn to knit if you don't want to learn to knit, um, like plan a video game that you're going to play this winter. You know, what's one that you haven't played that you want to play or, you know, what book series are you going to tackle? Just have something to look forward to purchase it now. Maybe like one, a bit, one of those big sprawling board games that takes a long time to play. Yeah. Um, purchase it now, get it, you know, get it in order and be like, this is what I'm going to do once, once I start to feel bad. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good 
idea. I think this year is going to be particularly hard for people because, you know, those normal things that we do to get out of the house when when it's winter time probably aren't going to be available to us. So, yeah, we've spent all spring and summer <laughs> in our homes. So now yeah. winter's going to be especially hard. So. Yeah. And they all, another suggestion that I thought was a good one was to make sure that you have like, um, adequate winter outdoor weather clothing because you might want to be outside more than you would be normally. You might be like hanging out on someone's deck in temperatures that you wouldn't be hanging out on someone's deck in the past. So like make sure you have like a hat, make sure you have gloves, make sure you have like, you know, for me, it's a gigantic scarf that I can, you know, encase my entire body in, in whatever way I need to. But you know, just make sure you, boots, you know, maybe not all of us have warm winter boots because yeah. you don't get that cold of winters and that much snow anymore. But maybe yeah. you want them if you're going to be sitting on your parents' deck in the evenings when you normally wouldn't be. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. I love so. outside clothes because, yeah. I don't oh, you want to come outside and cold. <laughs> you work from your, car, your car into work, from work to your car, your car to your house, and you don't need boots for that. So. Yeah. 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 I had <laughs> I saw very exciting ebook news. Well, oh, okay. Digital book news this week. Yeah. John Sargent is out at Macmillan. Was he <laughs> out or did he? Um, it was differences in visions of where the company should be heading. Um, so, yeah, so he's out. And everyone in, in the comments is probably like, what? Who, what? Okay, I will give you the backstory. John Sargent was the head of, well, I guess until January 1st, he's the head of Macmillan. And he started this whole book embargo where libraries could not purchase um, ebook versions of their books for eight weeks after they were published, um, which caused a lot of libraries, including ours, to just say, you know what, fine, we aren't buying your books. And we stopped buying um, from Macmillan because an embargo like that is very unfair. And it's unfair to our, our readers. And we did not want it to become the norm in the industry. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want other publishers following suit because people love ebooks and they want the book when it's out and when there's the buzz about it, when people are talking about the book, that's when people want it. And making it impossible for libraries to buy the books at that time was just, they thought it would lead to more retail sales. Um, it did not because <clears throat> people didn't want to buy them and they ended up losing money because and a lot of people don't know this. Libraries, libraries pay much higher prices for ebooks and audiobooks. Um, we, it's usually often around five times what the retail price is, and that those ebooks and audiobooks come with limitations. Like we can only circulate them 26 times, and then poof, they expire. And we have to buy them again. Or we get them, but we only get them for two years and they can check out as many times in that two year period as they want. But after two years, poof, they disappear. So we have to rebuy them. And we're rebuying them at prices that are significantly higher than what people are paying when they buy it on their Kindle or, or you know, whatever bookstore they go through. Um, so libraries pay a lot to provide eBooks to people. And a lot of people just don't think about that because it's not a physical item. They just kind of think, oh, well, it's free and everyone can have it at the same time. And it's not like that. There are, you know, all these contracts and licenses and restrictions that are in place for libraries. And John Sargent was just trying to make it that much more difficult. And um, he thought that by making libraries the bad guys, like that's what he really tried to do. He really tried to say, you like, libraries are stealing profits from publishers and authors. We're not, we're paying premium prices to access these eBooks. But um, he got a lot of authors thinking that, oh, libraries are the bad guys. You don't want to sell to libraries. So he, but obviously his plan did not work. They lost money instead of made money and he's out of there. So that was very happy news for me. I'm like all 
I'm all about the eBooks and I'm all about equity and access. And that's, that's, that's what a library is. It's mm -hmm. everyone who has access. Yeah. And, you know, we want to make it equitable across the board, everyone, mm -hmm. all the time. And he was making that impossible. So, I mean, that yeah. wasn't the only reason he's out. There were a couple other things that went on at McMillan that people were not happy about, but that was for me, that was the big thing. So yeah, it was a difficult time because um, because we, I mean, they're, they're a significant publisher. And so it was difficult mm -hmm. to explain to people why a book they were, uh, an author, for example, that they were used to being able Nora to. Nora Roberts. Nora Roberts is one of their big authors and she, people like her books and they're like, hey, why aren't, why, why aren't you, why don't you have this available as a new book? And we would have to explain to them. And when we explained it to people, they were like, oh, that's ridiculous. And they agreed with us. But we didn't get to have that conversation one on one with a lot of people. We did try to we put links in Overdrive so people could go and read about what was happening. But um, and it, was, it wasn't just us. This was ALA. I mean, the library library world at large was, was yeah. taking it down. Um, but the thing is that like, like Leo was saying that he didn't count on is the people who came, who t are used to reading Nora Roberts from the library and then found out they couldn't, they didn't go by the Nora Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, but anyway, let me, sorry, go ahead. I, I saw more than one, cause there were some libraries that were really great and had like, you know, a lot of, a large following on social media. And when they explained the situation, they were like, you know what? I'm not buying anything from that publisher. I buy a lot of my own books, but that's not fair. I won't buy them. So it was like even people who would have normally bought their own stuff were saying no, because that's not fair. And I, you know, taking that stand was kind of, it felt good. And it felt good. You know, librarians don't get to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't get to do a lot of the world very often, but <laughs> we, like make, we don't make a lot of scenes. We like yeah. to make scenes actually, but we don't get the opportunity to make a lot of them. So, um, and thank you, Liz and Audrey, for being appropriately outraged. Liz went all caps, so thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's 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 one of those things that. How many authors have you discovered from reading a library book and then you've gone out and bought their books because you love them and you're like, I want this to be part of my life forever. And so the library introduces you to people that you wouldn't have maybe taken a chance on in the bookstore where you had to pay for it, but you're willing to take the chance with a library checkout. So yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. libraries are not the bad guys. <laughs> no. And this there's no smooth transition, but I just knew that something else that we had wanted to talk about um, was, you know, maybe we, I don't know, I don't have to come up with a transition, but um, books that we can't keep on the shelves at the library. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about, and with e-copies, they're either always available or they're not always available, but they also, they also can't disappear of their own volition. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so we were, we're talking about books we have to just like always reorder, yes. always reordering, or, or books that just tend to go missing um people take that I do not keep a book on wicca on the shelf i went looking i went looking i was so surprised to find this book it's the modern witchcraft book of the year it has both witchcraft and tarot in the title and it was still on the shelf i cannot keep this stuff it yeah witchcraft or tarot or astrology in the title, it's gone. I cannot, no. I buy them and poof, they disappear. I'm like, where did they go? They're not checked out. Um, Dog Man, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Disappear Upstairs in New Services. A Child Called It. I cannot buy enough copies yeah. of that book and they just disappear. Every like, few months, every few months, we repurchase one in those in that series, A Child Called It, A Man Called Dave, you know. Um, oh, it's, it is. Uh, it's magic. <laughs> that does make sense by the witchcraft book. Magic themselves away. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes they, they do disappear. And sometimes they are checked out and never come back. Um, right. Because recently I was doing what I was doing a book and there were 44 copies in the consortium as a whole. 
And outside of the two that I had in my hand, um, I think 39 of them were all lost, which means that someone checked them out and didn't return them ever. So right. it's just, there are certain areas that we just always are rebuying. Another one in DVDs is horror. The horror movies just vanish. Um, yeah. um, Judith says GED books. Um, every few years I have to buy a new copy of Mein Kampf. Um, like these books just, go. And I will say, I cannot understand a child called it. Like that's, I can't bring myself to read that book. Like, I don't want to hear about the horrible, wretched things that someone had to endure. Like, if it just, that just doesn't sound like pleasant reading to me. Well, so I have a feeling it's probably very meaningful to the people who read it. And yes. probably it's a situation where it's important to the person reading it and they're not able to get it back to us and in those instances you know i'm glad that they found what they needed though because absolutely but it's just it's, yeah. that's one of those books i'm like i don't have any interest in reading that well i read it enough times i feel like you need to at this point I, I know i cannot tell you how many copies of that book i have ordered over the years hundreds probably uh, it just, it, I cannot keep it on the shelf. But that, again, like you said, is the beauty of ebooks because people don't steal them and they don't um, check them out and not return them. They're all, <laughs> all yeah. there. Audrey said that they also tend to lose TV tie in books, Avengers, Disney, that kind of thing. Um, but they do tend to be paperback and, and cheap, she says. Um, and yeah, it's just th things that are kind of of the moment also do tend to be, and sometimes things also just check out so many times that they have a short shelf life because they just, they're, they're too worn. You know, we're always buying them because, I mean, and, and like she's saying with the Disney stuff, uh, kind of like family type movies, Disney movies, things that go home and, and it's a child watching them. There's just a little bit less care involved with that. Those are ones that we're going to always be replacing um, because we always need to have them. But yeah, it's definitely, there's a, there's some things that we know. And I mean, I've worked here for over four years and even just me, the amount of times that I have processed a child called it is, I mean, innumerable. <laughs> And she mentions like the Quran disappears. Like every few years we have to buy a new one. Like it just goes away. Like it's, yeah. it's amazing to me. But seriously, witchcraft and Wicca books are probably, and all of those like esoteric arts, like um, dream, home, dream, like dream, 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 dream interpretation, dream. Um, astrology, all of that. It is, it just goes, it disappears. I'm constantly rebuying it. And people will come in and ask for it. I'm like, yeah, let's go to the shelves. And you go to the shelves and there's nothing there. The gap where it used to be. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it'll be like, I just ordered stuff three months ago. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, so I did just do a horror replacement because it's coming up on Halloween. So that's the time of year I do it. Every September, it's like, okay, you know what? I need to buy another copy of Halloween, another copy of Friday the 13th, another copy, you know, just yeah. children's porn, the, the classic older, you know, like 80s-ish, 70s, 80s horror movies. So I did that. So we tried to make sure we're poltergeist, trying to make sure we're like in. Haunted Ohio. Those books disappear too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but again, like Liz said, perhaps someone, maybe a ghost took it or maybe someone took it intending to find a ghost and then the ghost found them and how are we going to get our book back? Exactly. If it was taken by a ghost. <laughs> so speaking of Halloween, but I know we're like near the end, but like on a totally different topic, I did just want to point out this book that we got. It's called The Wicked Baker. And apparently it's by a contestant on a tw the 2019 season of Great British <laughs> Bake Off baking show. Um, and it's called The Wicked Baker. And that is like like a cupcake situation with like witch's legs coming out of it. <laughs> it's really, really cute. Um, and this is the type of thing that it's not possible for me to make any of this stuff, but it's really fun to look at. And she has it all, um, you know, displayed really well. I'm trying to find another picture that will come up easily on here. Um, but they're all, it's all Halloween themed and it's all really, really cute and really fun to look at. So if someone is ambitious and would like to check this out, um, I, 
I recommend it. Um, and and you're contract contractually obligated to then provide us with baked goods. That okay. was in the yes. of your library card application. If you check out cookbooks, you have to provide us with yummy treats. There you go. Yes, if you make something from them and it works out, we have to try it. Um, these are fortune cookies. Can you see they have teeth? Like yeah, that's adorable. So it's a lot of really good stuff. So I was, I think it's really fun to look at. Um, this is a lollipop that looks like it's a cut. I think there's cotton candy involved. But it's a ghost. Ooh, that's cute. So it's really fun to look at. So if you're in the mood, if you're getting in the Halloween spirit, and um, we don't have any books on witches at the library, you can check out the Wicked Baker because um, it's it's really fun to look at. And then you can make something, and then you can after COVID, bring it to us when we're allowed to accept food from people. <laughs> I think that like Pinterest fail <laughs> vlog or something. I'm just trying to picture what those, what the legs coming out of that would look like. You can do it. I have faith. I have faith. Thank you. Very much. Oh yeah. And so Mary comments, please provide us your individually packaged creations. That's a good point. You can make them and then you can package them individually for us. And bring them. <laughs> Well, I do think we hit our time today. Yeah. Thank you for joining us again. It's so nice to be on here. Um, <laughs> so nice to see you guys and to chat. So thank you for joining us this morning and please join us again next, next Friday. Friday. All right, have a good, week or good weekend, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.